Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? It is the Sunday, the 3rd of March, 2024. March already. Who can believe it? My hair has just gone a bit funny. Oh, well, we'll worry about that later. I have a word with the, uh, the, the dressing department. Now, today, we are going to be talking about how do you grow food all year round, particularly harvesting. This was a question that I think it was Amanda who asked about it last week. So uh, get ready for that. Firstly, let's see if anybody is out there. And straight away, yes, we've got Buddy C and a lot of a man saying hello, uh, good evening, everyone. Adrian is there saying hello to all. Scott is there saying good evening, all. Good evening to you. Uh, Turbo Stream saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Rob's Allotment Gardening is there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Kate is there saying good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. We have got uh, Anna Jones also out there saying good evening, Garners. Good evening to you. And, oh, uh, Rob saying hello to a few people as well. Graham Arnold is there saying evening all. Good evening to you. Ian is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, who else have we got? Da -da -da -da. Digwell is there saying, this week we delve into Mongolian. <laughs> He's trying to add a bit of culture each week and telling us how he he pronounces these words. I'm not even going to give it a try. I'll just say nod and agree with him. Nod and agree. Uh, Amanda has joined us. Good evening to you. Uh, she's in the Facebook group and has let me know who she is at the end. Rebecca is also in the Facebook group and said, good evening, Richard. Hope everyone has had a good gardening week indeed. And my dad is out there as well. Good evening, to you if you are watching please do let us know please do say hello we don't bite we welcome to hear from you all um always a pleasure what we would like to do I, I guess i should explain is we have a subject each week that we want everybody's input in we want to learn from each other we think of it like a get together a gardening people get together where we talk about gardening this week as i said we are talking about how do you grow food all year round? This has came in, as I said, from, I think it was Amanda. She was asking, how do we manage it? And it, it is one of those things that I think we often try to achieve. But it's not easy, is it? Especially at this time of year. March, April, May is what is known as the hunger or the hungry gap, where there's very, very little food or fresh food that is available, unless you've done a lot of pre-thinking. And this is often, if you think about it, we often sow a lot of vegetables for winter, or well, winter's been and gone, but we don't really think about spring so much when we are sowing. It's a lot of the stuff we need to sow back end of last year, maybe even the middle of last year. For me, the answer to this is all about thinking ahead, thinking what we're going to be doing in two, three, four, five, six months' time almost like a gardening schedule. But as you know, I like to keep it simple. So bear that in mind. Now just quickly get into the comments once again, because I can see them coming in. Digwell is there saying, I'll just sit in the corner quietly. Please don't be quiet, Digwell. We love to hear your input from it. Uh, Rob is laughing as well. Chili Kate is there saying, hi, everyone. Hope everyone is well. Sitting down for the first time today. What a beautiful day it has been today, I've got to say. The weather has just been fantastic, hasn't it? Make it so worthwhile. Andrew Norris has joined and saying evening all, indeed. And Graham Arnold he is saying still got parsnip sprouts and some purple sprouting broccoli in the garden. Um, yeah, so that is probably going to be a good place to start. What have you still got that you are harvesting this at the moment it's a, actually a very good question for me we have got leeks we have got uh parsnips we've still got carrots we've got purple sprouting broccoli cabbage not quite there but it won't be long kale uh what else have we got um i think that is all we've got that is fresh but we've got a lot of stuff in storage. But fresh. Oh, chard. I forgot to mention chard with lettuce as well. Still got lettuce, spring onions and things like that. So there's a lot of, a lot of this lovely little food that is just coming in and, and is ready. So that's a, probably a good question to start off with. 
what have you got that you're harvesting right at the moment? Graham says still, oh, yeah, I've read that one out. Anna Jane says, really enjoyed the podcast this week with Jenny and Scott. They were good, weren't they? I thought it was just the right chance to get them in and have a bit of a, a meeting as such about what I found last week. Hopefully, we might do a few more of those in the future as well. Steve has joined us. Good evening. Good evening, buddy. Hope you are well. Greg has joined us saying, hello, all. Still got loads to do. The allotment isn't a priority right now, but looking forward to potting on chili seedlings tonight yeah i know I, I think a lot of people at the moment aren't really visiting the allotment because it's so wet to be fair and i i do think that is a problem for a lot of people even myself my garden there's a, a hole with that roxy dug a hole in that is just full up of water and that's below the, the, the grass it's below soil level full up of water it just goes to show how wet it is Digwell is there saying, mega hard frost here today. Luckily, the snow mounted. I saw he had snow yesterday, but we had a hard frost last night as well. So it, it, it just goes to show we got lulled into a sense that everything was over, but it comes back and bites us. Derby Stream says, if we continue with wet winters, we could be self-sufficient in rice. Thinking of turning my allotment into a paddy field. It's not a bad idea, actually. Um, I'd love to know. And what goes into growing rice here in the UK? Could we do it? Steve says, still harvesting leeks and by next week, purple sprouting broccoli. Sowing some lettuce right now as well. So there's another one for leeks and purple sprouting broccoli. Um, Scott says, I have... I have, I still have leeks, celeriac, and parsnips. Got that celeriac. That's another good one that we can have ready. Uh, Rob says we had a good frost this morning, and chili cake says still harvesting parsnips, leeks, and sprouts. Uh, Digwell says only a few like chard and carrots left here, as I'm having a big revamp. Uh, good, good, good. Good. Uh, what have we got? Tobo Stream says, I walked to the Maya allotment yesterday. It's even wetter than the last time I went down. Most things have rotted down there now. So demoralized with it all. We will get you back on it, Turbo. We will bring up your moralize, your moral, your 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 enthusiasm. We will get there. Don't be disheartened. Think of it as a break. Chance to rethink things. Uh, Bethan has joined us as well. Good evening to you. We're talking about. Well, the question I'm asking at the moment, what crops are you harvesting at the moment? Um, so, yeah, what I'm seeing from what you're saying, a lot of crops like leeks, parsnips, all those crops that I think you'd have to think about in, um, in advance. And for me, leeks is our, a, a, great, a great example. I've sown some leeks. A uh, couple last week, a um, uh, few weeks before that as well. I'll be sowing some later on this month and some in April. And the reason I'm doing that, all those leaks, um, those leaks, we want those out in the ground as soon as we can possibly get them. So we 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 sow them now. They could be in the ground for well, not in the ground. They could be grown for up to a year. So we need to make sure that they are ready to go. So we're sowing those now. They will go in the ground. They will stay in the ground for a year. Same as sprouts. You know, we can sow those now, maybe in a few weeks' time as well. Um, purple sprout and broccoli as well. These are crops, I say, they take a good year before we can actually start harvesting them. When it comes to things like parsnips, I see a lot of people are talking as well. We could sow those about now. I think March can be a little bit too early, depending on where you are and your conditions, of course. But I usually sow my parsnips April, maybe even May. If we sow them too early, I just think sometimes the ground is too cold. That being said, it's quite mild at the moment, just very, very wet. But yeah, for me, it is all about thinking ahead and what have you got. So let's go back to the comments now. Scott is saying, I'm now Googling, can you grow rice in the UK? I'm sure there's probably somewhere that does grow rice in the UK. I'm sure it has been done. Uh, Greg says, our dog, also called Roxy, did you hear her just now, has dug a few holes that turned into ponds as well. Yeah, it, it happens, doesn't it? It happens. I'll tell you stories about Roxy in a bit as well 
Uh, still got, Bethan says, still got carrots, parsnip, celeriac, and purple sprouting broccoli. Also got mustard leaves and spinach to harvest every now and again. That reminds me, yes, mustard. We got some of that that we sowed, where was it, December, November, December as well. We're, we're harvesting and lamb's lettuce as well. Absolutely delicious. We got quite a bit of that. Again, these are all things that we've sown late on in the year, later than we would expect. And uh, we're harvesting those now. Uh, Greg says, still got parsnips and leeks to get through. Another one for parsnip and leeks. And Hargrave Gas says, whoops, sorry I'm late. Hope everyone is keeping well. Lovely to see you, buddy. Hope you are well too. Turbo Stream says, I was so sad I brought a bag of onion sets from Poundland. There you go. It's going to be there. The enthusiasm is going to come back there, buddy. We are going to help with you that. Ian says, sorry to hear that, Turbo Stream. Try some raised beds. Um, uh, Idaho Garden Girls joined. Hi, Richard and everyone in the chat. Hello to you. And Jenny has also joined. Hello. Sorry I am late. Hope you are well and had a great week. I lost most crops as we have moved, but I still have buckets of carrots. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So, yeah, I do. Coming back to eating seasonally, growing seasonally. So at the moment we are in spring, we, we, we are thinking, you know, what we sow now. If we sow, say, cabbages, they're probably going to be for summer, late summer. Um, we will be sowing summer in May, which will be our winter cabbage. And June, no, maybe July, August, we'll sow some more cabbage, which will be for around this time next year. Cabbage, cauliflower, all fall into that category. Um, all the, it's all about, I think, thinking ahead. But let's not forget, it's also about preserving what we harvest as well. I'm a big fan of using freezers, obviously. So we preserve a lot of our crops that we have in the summer so we can eat those throughout the winter. Um, or we like carrots and parsnips, we leave in the ground and leeks until we need them. Um, so, yeah, I want to hear what your thoughts are on that. What do you when do you sow certain crops? It's, let's go down that route now. When do you sow certain crops so that you can harvest those during the hunger gap or harvest them when there's less food around? Toby Stream says, I re-sow the Elisa Craig onion seeds after they died in the porch last week. My mustard is riddled with white fly. My chard has green fly. This is Turbo Stream. Funny enough, I've had the same problem. I'm going to be sharing that in my in the podcast tomorrow. I've had the same problem with my seedlings in my kitchen. So what I I went out and got some Grazers G3, and I've been spraying that over my seedlings in order to deal with the white fly and the green fly. And it works. It does work quite nicely. Um, it doesn't kill anything. It just wards them off. I've used the Grazer's G2 for slugs and snails. Now the G3 for a whole wide range of pests. Uh, Richard Golden has joined. Hello all. Hope you're well. Lovely to see you, my friend. Hope you are doing well. Digwell says, no purple sprouting broccoli for me in the future. I cannot lose the space on the plot for nine months. This is the problem. As I said, purple sprouting broccoli, nine months to a year, it is growing for you. It is a long-term plant the same with brussels sprouts you really if you have, haven't got the space it is very difficult to try and conjure up the space for it and dedicate the space for it i'm quite lucky i do have the space so i do make a point of always trying to grow it um but that's just that's just me that's just me of course uh digwell also says uh to turbo stream try sb plant invigorator for dealing with um white fly and and green fly a uh, lot of options out there a lot of options out there Toby stream says i'm seriously thinking about raised beds honestly if you have problems with flooding raised beds and no dig is honestly probably the best way to go it does make a huge difference if you can do it so yeah Sowing seeds at the right time, making sure you have you're thinking ahead, thinking three, four, five, six months down the line is quite a key thing to being able to grow food all year round. Uh, leaving carrots and parsnips in the ground, leaving heart there me get my words out, freezing or um preserving food as well is quite an important thing. But what about moving the garden indoors? 
I've said about seedlings and things like that. We've got our seedlings indoors. We, we're here, we're lucky enough, we have a greenhouse. So we do grow extra food in there. And a veggie pod as well. Our veggie pod is also a great way of growing food throughout the winter because it does hold on to a lot of our the heat. A lot of our lettuces and our, our salad crops are grown in my medium veggie pod. In fact, I've still got celery in the veggie pod as well. So that sort of... Um, the heat trap, the, the the protection does help grow crops. And the same with greenhouses. I think many people use their greenhouses for growing seedlings on at this time. But we've also got to think about it of growing our, our salad crops and things like that. So here we're able to grow a lot of lettuces right through the winter, as well as selecting, of course, the right varieties, the winter varieties. So good, good point there. Bethan says, I have Crown Prince squash left too, which will keep us going for a while. Yeah. Pumpkins and squashes, I mean, they just store for so long. Butternut squash particularly, I, I mean, big fan of that. Absolutely big fan of it. Idaho says, it's snowing here at the moment, so I'm focusing on indoors. Yeah, um, this is what I was talking about. You know, we move it indoors, shelving and things like that, hydroponics and things like that but um let me know what do you do toby stream says i noted poundland are selling seaweed liquid feed i brought a bottle to try i use that a lot a lot for my young plants uh toby stream says made by doff yeah I, I th i've seen them in there many many times uh digwell says i'm having a squash curry tonight i am sat here pulling the seeds out of my uki uki uchiki Curry, oh my god, my keyboard is a mess. That's easy for me to say. Um, squash curry, lovely, lovely. Sounds like a good curry, it has to be said. Uh, I used my last trombuccino a few weeks ago. This is what I'm talking about when it gives me squash, particularly the autumn winter squash. They are so good at storing. Butternut squash is probably one of the best examples because. I've had butternut squash that can last uh, a year in storage and in the worst possible conditions. But if you can store them right, the squash will give you food right throughout the winter if you grow enough of them. Again, this is all very well us sitting here and saying, uh, you know, we can grow food all year round. We have space to do it in many cases. There's some people out there that don't have the space. And that's where I think you have to... Um, you have to be very, very organized. And as crops come out, you put new ones in sort of thing and really stick on it. But the use of cloches and cold frames do help with that as well. Um, Toby Storm says, I still have broad beans, French beans and cauliflowers in the freezer. There we go. That's great stuff. Um, Scott says, I love Crown Prince squash. Try peeling slivers off with a peeler and use it in salads as after dressing with vinegar and olive oil absolutely lovely 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 and digra says it's pronounced you cheeky curry thank you thank you does help sometimes <laughs> uh and raspberries blackberries and a few gooseberries too oh in uh poundland yeah yeah i got some hanging baskets for pound from poundland the other day as well uh, do the same with trombuccino for the salads, and that's great, Digwell. Well, indeed, indeed. Um, Jenny, I still have a Crown Prince blue banana squash and Uchiki curry. Uchiki curry, that's how I'm pronouncing it now. Uchiki curry. I'm never going to forget that now you said that. Um, and <laughs> as Rob says, if I live closer, I'll be round to taste your curry. I've I've had a couple of delicious meals this weekend. Amanda's cooked their vegan meals. Now we're not going vegan. A bit of a story on that because um, Amanda made me laugh. But they're, they're vegan meals that we've been eating for the last couple of days. Basically, just vegetables and absolutely delicious. Today was like olives in a tomato sauce and chard and uh, beans and harissa paste. Absolutely delicious with homemade naan bread. Absolutely delicious. I can't remember what we had last night, but it was just as nice. But my wife goes to me as we're eating our dinner tonight. Do you think we should turn vegan? I turned around to her and I said, yesterday I bought two new chickens. You've probably seen a photo of them. I'm not going to go vegan when I've just bought two chickens for, for us to get eggs. 
Amanda goes jokingly, are eggs not vegan then? No, they're not. <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh about that, but uh, we, I, you know, I've got no problem with free ve no problem with vegans, but um, I don't think I could ever do it myself. Oh no, the fruits are in the freezer, says Turbo Stream. Yes, I'll come back to the that, that. Sorry, my mistake, my mistake there. Um, there we go. Fruits are in the freezer again. It's all about that preserving in the summer to eat through the winter as well, isn't it? Bethan says, I made a squash and bolotti bean curry the other night. It was lovely. The beans were dried from the summer. Now, that's a good point. Beans, get, trying to get beans in the winter. And I'm a big fan of dried beans at the moment. We're growing lots of loaves. Or we're, we're certainly trying to improve the amount that we grow. We grew, um, oh, what are they called? The red and black ones. I can't think what they're called now. Um, but they, they dried on the vine. And we've... Uh, We've harvested those, we've stored those, and we can rehydrate those and eat those again. And we're going to be growing those again this year just because they're so lovely and so good. And I want to do more dried beans, haricot beans, and uh, things like that. Uh, Nicola's joined saying, evening, all still in the garden, lost track of time. Is it still light out there? It looks like it's not quite as light as it could be. Uh, what else have we got? Turbo Stream says, I'm off down the M5 to have some curry later. We all do love good food. You do make me hungry sometimes. You cheeky curry. I love it. I'm stealing that and a great name for a curry using it on the menu. There we go. Especially if you use a you cheeky curry squash in it. It would in a, a you cheeky curry squash in a curry. That 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 works. That works. <laughs> the girl says, I'm on a seafood diet. I seafood, I eat it. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying not to go for that diet because I need to lose weight. Uh, Rob says, I live in Leicester. We have some of the best curry houses in the UK. Well, that's, that sounds like a good reason to visit Leicester. I love a good curry. I love a good curry. Black-eyed beans. No, they're not black-eyed beans. They're, um, they're quite well known. I can't think what they are. They're like red and black or purple and black colored beans. Big World's got it. Bellotti beans. That's it. Bellotti beans. They were absolutely delicious, and they've they've dried out really easily. They've stored really well for the winter, um, and done really really well. Uh, I'll pop on a pic. Yeah, please do share the pic. We'd love to see it. Uh, Idaho is also after trying to grow more dried beans this year. I think this is sometimes trying to grow dried beans and things like that that we can store throughout the winter months. It's probably much easier than trying to grow food through the winter months. However, I still like fresh food over the winter and that's what we need to come back to and focus on pitch black here she says i can't can't see anything outside so it might be pitch black uh turbo stream i want to make some more jam can i find jam sugar no must be a seasonal thing being into three supermarkets and none on the shelves um you you could use apple crab apples and make a pectin or just add, add pectin um i think you can get get might be able to get pectin in a supermarket instead uh you you could hollow the squash out and serve it the curry in the shell talking about oh i said to, i said to amanda i want a curry soon and we haven't had one so it's i'm cooking tomorrow but we're gonna have a curry i think food for storage food for storage um Indeed, indeed. Uh, buy a bottle of Serto liquid pectin. That's the stuff I was thinking of. Yeah, if you can't get jam sugar, then you might need this pectin stock or Serto. I've seen it in, in, in Tesco's and other shops like that. Uh, not seen pectin. We'll have to have a look again. It's usually in the jam or in the sugar area when the last time I looked. Uh, it's like a, a bottle. I think it's normally a green bottle. It looks a bit like lemon juice. But that, that's what you're looking for if you can't get any jam sugar. Uh, I'm Rob says, I'm starving talking, listening to all this food talk. How do you think I feel? I've had my dinner and now I'm getting hungry once again as well. It's a side voice of coffee. Anyway, let's come back. So. 
I think this it, it, let's come back to this. How are we harvesting food at this time of year? And I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to my veggie pod because my veggie pod has been a real. I mean, I've had a veggie. I've got three veggie pods now, but my veggie pods have been a success all the time that I've had them. My small one, which I use, excuse me, for growing herbs, the parsley and the. The chives in there really are quite nice size now. But, I mean, I'm on the south coast, so I get things a little bit earlier than the, than all, all you get. But they are the parsley is you know it, huge. We really got to start harvesting some of it and using it. The chives they've re-sprouted. They're of a decent size that we can start harvesting those. And I think I put this all down to the fact that the the veggie pod has the cover over it, which traps in some of the heat and encourages these plants to grow a little bit earlier, almost forced if you like. And that, for me, has been a big reason or a big way that we've managed to get some of these herbs going right now. We can harvest those right now. But we could, of course, have some her some of these pots of herbs indoors on our kitchen window seal where they're going to get also get a good start to warm up and get growing as well. I'm a big fan of growing herbs on a windowsill, especially over the winter months, right where you need them, so that you can just add them to any of your meals as and when you need them. And that could be parsley, chives, basil, dill, um, what's your oyster really when it comes to herbs on a windowsill? Uh, what have we got on the comments? Nicholas says it's still light, no solar light gardening yet, but going in. So still light where Nicola is. Um, for me, I'm just going to open this window. It's dark. It's dark. Turbo Stream says, sweet, we'll look again. <laughs> Talking about the pectin stock. Uh, Bethan is asking, Rob, if you are on the mend because you were in hospital um, recently. Hope you are okay. Uh, good, uh, thank you for reminding me about that as well. Hope you are okay. And says added pectin not always needed depending on the fruit being used. Yes, yeah, that's something we could really get into, isn't it? I think it does depend. Strawberries definitely need the added pectin, raspberries don't. But uh, I've not experimented enough with many of the other fruits to find out what does and doesn't. But um, perhaps you could share that with us. Uh, Rob does say, Yes, I am. Every day seems better. That's for good, good, good. Excuse me. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I have raspberries to use up. The blackberries should be okay. Raspberries don't need sh uh, jam sugar to turn into, into jam, although it has been frozen. Give it a try. Make a small jar and see what happens. Um, and we'll go from there. Turbo Stream says, it's dark in Birmingham. And Bethan says, I've been growing basil inside. And we have a lovely pesto pasta the other night. Yeah, this is my point. Growing herbs inside or in a veggie pod just gives you that little bit earlier chance to grow a lot of these, these herbs and keep our food coming in. Now, in my medium veggie pod, as I said, that's very much used for our lettuce or leafy green crops. We've got mustard. We've got lamb's lettuce. And we've got lettuce going in there. We, we have a salad. We've got lettuce outside as well, for that matter. But if we are having a salad or something, I just go and pick a few leaves and bring those indoors. I've actually got chard in there as well, but we've got chard growing outside in some of the beds. We, we've been eating a lot of that chard over the last couple of nights. Go out, pick a few leaves. I treat it a bit like spinach. I mean, it is similar to spinach. But again, these are all things that we were able to think ahead. And oh, I thought ahead. I sowed a load of chard last year and I've been growing that throughout the winter. It hasn't actually needed any protection outside, believe it or not. It just got into the bed. I had the view that we can always dig it up if we need the space in the bed. But it has been growing fantastically well and we have got plenty of it. So if you are going to be growing or you do want vegetables to eat fresh at this time of year, don't turn your nose at chard or perpetual spinach because that can be or can grow right through the winter. It's pretty hardy. Or certainly in my experience, I know I'm on, on the south coast of the UK, so we get slightly warmer um, weather than other people. But if we can do it, I think we can all do it. 
no, the, the tire base stream says after my blood test this week, I need to go on a low carb for a while, so perhaps I should not bother with the jam. Well, jam isn't going to have carbs in it, but it is high sugar, so it's up to you, up to you. But I pers my personal opinion, I mean, I love jam. I don't eat a huge amount of jam because it is added sugar. I'd sooner eat the raspberries out the freezer sort of thing as opposed to um, as opposed to adding extra sugar to turn them into jam. Um, Rob's the opposite. Rob loves raspberry jam but do not like fresh ra raspberries. I love fresh raspberries. I love fresh anything though. Um, can't get much higher carb content than jam. Is it carbs or is it sugar in there? I, I was never very good at that sort of thing. I just, for me, high sugar is one of the worst things that we have. Um, Bethan says, I give my child to the chickens. They seem to love it. I grow the colored ones, and it also gives the garden a good flash of color. Yes, I've got the yellow canary ones, and you get these beautiful yellow stems, don't you? Um, they just look brilliant. They look like a lovely color um all the time and, and, and that looks just lifts the mood and makes things look great in the winter um yeah uh i know dig well i'm on the cusp of my blood sugars there we go uh Beddows, wish i could eat what i grow two reasons i can't as the grandkids get in first and i can't find bacon sand bacon seeds anywhere Ian, there's a very easy way to keep your grandkids off your vegetables. Tell them you wee on it when they're not around to to uh, help them. They will not eat it again. I can guarantee you that. I love German toast. Yeah, I do. I do. Sugar is 100% carbs. Sugar is carbs. It's right. I've learned something there. I, I'm never very good when it comes to the whole carbohydrates and things like that. So I just see sugar. Sugar is bad. But how can I phrase this the way I, I it is in my head? Sugar is bad, but a little bit of sugar every now and then is a treat. That's it. It's a treat. I don't have sugar in my coffee or anything, but sugar is a treat every now and then. Everything in moderation, as they say. Um, I do says a local pig farm has bacon seeds. Oh, they they we joke about it, but there are scientists that are growing meats, aren't there? And it does make you wonder, does that mean that in reality, I'm not sure I'd want to eat it, but we're going to be able to grow sausages and bacon and pork chops and things like that in our gardens. I'm, I'm not quite sure how I feel on that, but uh, this make you wonder. Right, um, let's have a quick look at a couple of your photos. We've got the, um, wait, oh, hang on, which one? The option's gone, hang on, hang on. Nope, nope, hang on, hang on. Let me, oh, my, oh, hang on, it's because that's what I was looking for. Sorry, I got there in the end. It disappeared off my screen. Your harvests, the photos that you've sent in of your harvests this week. We've got a couple of photos, but it tallies up with what we're talking about. So first of all, Beth and we have our hydroponics. There's tomatoes and lettuce. And she's harvested this week. Tallies up. Hydroponics is something I've never agree. I've never really gotten onto. But uh, if you are looking to grow food all year round, then hydroponics might be something you need to think about as well. I say might. I prefer eating seasonally. So yeah, I'm going to sneeze at some point. And then Digwell has been making this winter soup. We got parsnips, carrots, two types of carrots, orange balm and parsley, black radish, and molly radish as well. That's all the photos we've had for harvesting this week. We've still got photos coming up a little bit later on. But there, yeah, some good ideas, isn't it? And again, hydroponics is something to think about if you are wanting to grow food all year round um 
Graham says bacon sandwich with brown sauce. Now, does anybody know what goes into brown sauce? I I want to make a I make tomato ketchup, but I want to make a brown sauce because we eat a lot of it. Um I gotta find out what goes into it. Turbo Stream says my cholesterol is sky high too. Probably need to learn how to grow lettuce then. Everything in moderation. I do think it is everything in moderation. And I, I'll accept. I'm overweight. I'm a beast. I accept that. Um, I eat healthy. I exercise. I just, I eat too much. And that's my fall down. Uh, I agree with you, Richard. Everything in moderation except moderation itself. Good stance. Good stance. Tabo stream, bacon sarnie with brown sauce. We're talking about bacon sarnies now. Uh, Benno says, because I struggle to swallow, I have five spoons of sugar in my coffee to help keep up my weight. Yeah, yeah, the medical reasons going on there with Beddo. So I'd say sugar is bad. At times, it obviously does come come up. Uh, Graham says, you're not allowed turbo. We're talking about bacon sandwiches. Uh, I like tomato sauce on mine, and uh, so I have one of each. I was asking what goes into brown sauce. Scott says it's fruit-based dates, apples, and spices. Oh, oh I can't. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. You, you need a statin at night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the secret ingredient in brown sauce is tamarind placed. Yeah, I think I have heard that, actually. Must get some. Must get some. Idaho says, I used to be a hardcore in the ground gardener, but now I have raised beds, large containers, stick, stacking planters, grow bags, and indoor hydroponics. Each has its advantages. That's exactly it. I think, you think it, is, it is easy to say that we have all these suggestions. As I said, I think it was Amanda that was asking about this last week. It's easy for me to sit here and say, just do this, just do that. But I, I've got... A full size allotment, a garden, as well as in a very understanding wife that lets me use indoors. And we get all our eggs from our chickens and things like that. So we have our advantages with space, and not everybody has that same situation. That may, may be where indoor hydroponics, grow bags, and everything else comes into it. So completely right, completely right. Um as I said, I, I, I prefer to eat seasonally. And the reason I say I think it's right that we eat seasonally is because there's I, – I personally believe that humans have evolved to eat what or this within the seasons. And a lot of our obesity problems comes from the fact that we can eat high-sugar items that aren't normally available – in the middle of winter whereas things let's take tomatoes as an example they're, they're fairly high in sugar they used to only be available in the summer when they were ready when they were growing now they're available all year round we're not storing that sugar to get us through the winter does that make sense to you just my thoughts um and that's what i try and stick to i'm not saying i'm very strong at that but the, my thoughts uh, intermittent fasting richard you can eat normally excuse me, just in six to eight hours. Yeah, I do do that. I do do that. That's how I've been trying to lose weight. It's just not easy. To, you've got to have a lot of willpower. That first thing in the morning, I really want to eat. Um, Digwell homemade brown sauce recipe upcoming. Absolutely. Uh, tamarind and sugar, vinegar and sugar. And Margaret's also got the brown sauce recipe as well. Hello, Margaret. Hope you are well. Uh, uh, um, what's happened there? Turbo stream. They used to make HP sauce in Birmingham. Now it's made in Belgium. Ah, uh, yeah, I love it, love it, love it. Um, you're lucky to be able to have chickens. Too many foxes, too many local foxes by me. We got foxes near us as well. My my chicken coop is fox proof, so I've, I've made I've taken steps to try and make it. Um, Interesting story about, well, you'll hear more on the podcast tomorrow. Interesting story about the chickens. So I finished work the other day quite early. One of my chickens has been going through the malt lately, so we haven't been getting any eggs. Amanda went out and brought some eggs the other day, which 
every couple of years we try to replenish our chickens because they do they do um, go for a malt and they stop laying, as anybody who has chickens knows. But I was out in the garden the other day, I think it was Wednesday, and I saw this rodent climbing up the inside of the cage. And it was literally hanging on the cage like this. I had a closer look. It looked at me like that, double looked at me, and then legged it off. I couldn't work out if it was a mouse or a rat. I think it was a, um, a mouse because its ears were quite big. Now, of course, it was quite a big mouse if it is a mouse. I'd be worried about that all week and keeping an eye on things to try and figure out how I can deal with it. Uh, as I said, chicken went for the malt. So I went off and got two new chickens yesterday, which we've been customising to their new home. And as soon as I got back from getting these new chickens, the chicken that had gone for the malt had laid an egg. So <laughs> she's back laying eggs again. <laughs> typical, typical. Today, however, we were out in the garden and this mouse made an appearance again, but Roxy got to it in time this time, and it's uh, sadly no longer with us. Um, I don't like killing anything, even slugs and snails. I don't like killing anything, so I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I do worry if anybody does see a big mouse and they get my chickens get the blame for it. Uh, Graham says, I will have a look after the show. Oh, we're talking about Digwell's recipes. Um, your postie would steal the eggs to Bristol veggies, in which she's laughing about. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Idaho says sugar wasn't readily available and was expensive. Now it is in every supermarket. Yeah, yeah, that is. Humans crave sugar, though, don't we? I know this isn't necessarily the right thing to say about. Um, humans crave sugar. And that's half the trouble why we crave it so much that it, it helps. It, it causes, in my eyes, obesity. And I'm not trying to be, look at me, I'm I'm stick thin. I'm not. Uh, Idaho says, good girl, Roxy. And, and Anne says, good, Roxy. Yeah, I did reward her for that, as I said. She did her, her job, um, indeed. Chitty Kate says, my old job, we used to make brown sauce in the factory. It wasn't just any brown sauce. No. Um, yeah, of course you did. Of course you did. Chitty Kate works as a, a food scientist, so it's probably better to tell us all these situations. They add sugar to everything these days when they remove the fat, doubling down on the whole food this year. Yes, yes. To me, again, I don't think fat is necessary. Extra fat is bad, but fat that is naturally in foods, I don't think is the, as bad as sugar. Sugar is the worst thing. Uh, Digwell says, to qualify my comment, Bristol Venture Garden Beds had her SSPC spud stolen from the envelope. Damn. That's a bad, bad, bad. True sugar is brown, and Bristol says, I try to avoid sugar, but when it's your birthday, then you just have to eat chocolate cake. Everything in moderation, as I said earlier. Everything in moderation. Um, oh, no, I dig well, that's awful. Let's come back to eating seasonally, though. As I said, the question came, how do you manage? How are you actually able to be able to grow food that you can eat right at this point? What are you growing? Um, I thought of something while, while having this discussion as well that I haven't mentioned is microgreens. I, I think I've said time and time again, I grow quite a few microgreens. They're not necessarily going to be the type of food that fills you up, but they are a good option if you do want to add a bit of fresh vegetables or fresh seasoning, I guess you could say, to some of your winter dishes. They grow in the smallest of spaces on your windowsill, and they are just absolutely delicious as well, if you get the right one. There's a wide variety. Basil is a good one. Cauliflower, um, just to name a few. Another thing that we could be growing. But again, coming back to what I think is the secret to how we grow food all year round it's all about thinking black, thinking ahead. Sow your seeds. Well, I guess one of the problems, I guess, I think we have this thing in gardening, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately. We overcomplicate things. We talk about, 
oh, you only want to sow seeds at this time of year, mostly March, April, May, because that's going to give you your summer stuff. You've got to, we've, as great owners growing food all year round, we've got to be sowing seeds all year round in order to keep it coming as well, which is part of the supporters club. If you're not a member of a supporters club, head to the vegetablepodcast.co.uk to find out more. But we grow food, or we sow seeds every month of the year, and they provide us with food all year round. Not everything, but a lot of stuff. And it is all about getting off that mindset that we can only sow seeds in a very short three month period, but thinking that we can sow seeds all year round. Uh, let's coming back to what have we got? What have we got? Uh, Digwell says, Yes, you need to come, you need to check the label. Often, low fat equals higher sugar completely. Um, this is why I don't like diet drinks either because i think they've substituted this sugar for something else at least although i think sugar is bad but at least sugar is a natural product what it's being replaced with is it necessarily natural i don't know this is something my wife and i have had a lot of discussions about Demo stream says i have always had a sweet tooth probably addicted to it it's not good not good i mean one of the things i used to have two sugars in my coffee and I literally went on a health kick one day and I turned around and said, I'm cutting sugar out. That's what I did. I stopped having sugar in my coffee. For two weeks, my coffee tasted disgusting. But after that, two weeks is all it took. I cannot stand the taste of sugar in my coffee. Try it. If you have sugar in your coffee, just try for two weeks without it. It will make a big difference. And now I, I should say I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that. It's just my own experience. Uh, I have Swiss chard. We've added green fly as a source of protein. L O L. The green fly does seem early this year, doesn't it? But as I said, Graves G2 or SB Plant Invigorator will probably deal with that. Uh, eat loads of sugar and fat. Overweight people are harder to kidnap. <laughs> completely, completely. Uh, Rob says, in my opinion, to be self-sufficient, you need a fair-sized plot and greenhouses slash polytunnels. I agree. I do kind of agree. But if you haven't got those, I think you've got to make do with what you've got and make the most of what you've got. So if you haven't got a greenhouse, you might have to do it on your or grow stuff on your window seals in your house or cold frames and things like that, especially if you haven't got the space. So I agree completely with what you're saying. But don't if you haven't got the space or the greenhouses or polytunnels, don't let that put you off from trying. One again, one of my annoyances I have with people that say they want to grow their own food, and they say they need a huge amount of land. And I'm like, no, you just need to start growing your own food. Use what you've got. You may not be able to grow all your food, but you're halfway to get in there. Uh, Jenny says, sorry I'm cooking, so couldn't comment. We eat seasonally. I refuse to buy tomatoes, etc. They taste crap and can make me ill. I use frozen, dried, stored, or follow Mother Nature. My um, I, my sort of thoughts as well, I, I, I just I try and eat seasonally. Uh, Graham says, you need a lot of space to be self-sufficient all year round. I'm happy to get two crops from each area every year. What's a lot of space? What would you define as a lot of space? Because I accept I have a lot of space, but I think I could be self-sufficient if I only had the garden. In fact, it happened in World War II, didn't it? Every, well, we weren't necessarily self-sufficient, but everybody grew their own vegetables in their gardens, which were probably the size of my gardens. And that was all year round because we had no choice but, we, but to do that. Uh, Bethan says, do you think you can grow enough microgreen basil to make a pesto, pesto from? Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. All depends how big your tub is, of course, but definitely can um, without a second. Would even question it. Absolutely. Uh, Nicholas says, I didn't grow much last year due to health issues and my father's health, but hope to do more this year. Fantastic, fantastic. I think the key thing, though, is keep it simple. Um, something I've been thinking a lot about lately. 
I know who says, wait, now I have kale and chard. They are not growing fast, mind you, but they, they are still alive and I can pick some leaves every three weeks. Also, dandelions are still green, so I can get those if I want. This is actually a good point, actually. Something, uh, we're talking of weeds, just reminded me, something we have growing in our garden, not planted by me, but it's called tricornered leek. Oh, well, we worked it out. It's a type of wild garlic or wild onion. It stinks when we cut it down. It grows quite a bit in my area, but it is an edible crop. It grows in such huge amounts here. We try not to, we can't harvest it, but there is a lot of it about, a lot of it about. Uh, Digwell says, if I have a few sweets with sorbitol in, I am on the loo for an hour. Yeah, I just, I Part of me is why I disagree with a sugar tax as much as I, I, I agree sugar is bad. The stuff that it's replaced with, I think, is going to be even worse. And I'm, I'm worried about it. Uh, I am sowing like nuts now. Succession sowings plus successional sowing. Good point. Uh, plus sowings for the season. I will be so like this now to at least mid October. Every week I'll be sowing three or four trays at least. Yeah. I'm sowing all I'm sowing a seed pretty much every day at the moment to try and keep everything going. And that's something I will keep going, keep doing. Successionally as well. That's an important point. So things like lettuce, we do try and sow every few weeks, lettuce, rocket, and things like that. So we can constantly have those pickings all year round. And when one's out the, the picture, so when a lettuce has gone past its best, for example, we've got another selection to choose from again trying to be organized as well is uh, a difficult one graham has put a, a a emoji up there um dig well my aubergines are riddled with giving in flight yep i'm glad it's not just me then it, it, it seems incredibly early doesn't it nicholas says synthetic sweeteners are worse than sugar but sugar isn't good for us either it's a poison to our body yeah, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Turbo Stream says, I've not had sugar in tea or coffee for years. Went cold turkey. The problem is a bag of triple chop cooks, cookies end up in my trolley. I definitely don't pop them in there. <laughs> Try online shopping. I, I'm, I'm kind of getting away from it. But if you, you try online shopping, you're only going to get what you order and you're not going to be tempted to add those extra things in, in theory. should work. Uh, Bethan says, my husband's pub quiz team used to be called Fat People Are Harder to Kidnap. Uh, Rob says, take a look at Steve's seaside garden and kitchen garden. He grows loads. Yeah, he's very organized. I haven't caught up with him for a long time, but he's very organized. He grows a lot of stuff all year round. Um, of course, he's lucky enough. He has room. He has time as well, uh, but definitely something to check out. Nicholas says, Hugh Richards' new half a tennis court size plot seems very good to feed a family of four with succession planting, 18 by 36 approx. Half a tennis court is probably the same size as most gardens, I'm guessing. It, it kind of proves my point. It's more if you are organised enough, You can grow food all year round. Dabrick Stream says, I brought a small greenhouse this week, so a tray of chard is now outside, so hopefully the green fly gets frosted. Excellent. Um, landlady says, Graham. Indeed, indeed. I know, so some of the tomato seeds I'm getting this year, Italian long keeping varieties. They're supposed to keep for three to four months. These are other long keeping varieties that will last four to five months. I'm looking fantastic, fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm thinking a couple of tunnel cloches for next winter. Yep, they do make a difference, especially with the salad crops. Uh, Amanda says, oddly, I think I'll grow more this year after I've given up half my plot. I agree. I agree. Sometimes um, when you have too much land, you don't know what to do with it. The space feels more manageable, and I have had time to prep it, and I really think about how I'm going to use this space effectively. I'll be growing up and in tabs in addition and to the polytunnel and plot beds to make the most of the reduced space, says Amanda. Yeah, um, I agree. I, I do agree. It is... Do, 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 do. Smaller space is easier to manage, and therefore, in theory, should be easier to organize better 
again, I come back to the conversations I've had where people say, I need three acres of land to grow all the food I want to do. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can do it on 10% of that. Uh, picking wild garlic leaves is okay. Digging up the roots is illegal. It's in my garden, so I can actually dig it up here as well. It's It grows in the past, believe it or not. Free cornered leek garlic is a non-native invasive plant, but tasty. It's, it, it is very invasive. Chickens have been the best thing to get rid of it, believe it or not. Um, Tahome Stream says, oh, no, online is worse, so I can't make the minimum amount, so I have to add up to the amount it's worth. It's worth bulk buy. Bulk buy the things you eat. Dig well, 1950s, 60s house had to have a garden big enough to support a family of four. four. That changed in the early 70s. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, I come back to the question I asked earlier. How big is plenty of land? Uh, Graham says, I agree you can grow food all year round, but for a family of five, it's a lot of food needed. Again, I think, what was it, square... Square foot gardening, I'm not a fan of it. You have to be so organised to pull it off, but it is meant to work. It's all about being that organised. Think, thinking ahead, being organised, planning ahead, all those sort of things go into it. And I think that's a key thing for tonight or for this conversation. Think ahead, plan ahead, and you'll get there. An example, I'll be sowing broccoli and cauliflowers every two weeks as we eat a lot of those. Peas will be sown weekly to top up any gaps and for shoots and salads, etc. Uh, I, I aim for some to harvest, some growing, some potted on or ready to plant and some grown. Every stage of each crop where appropriate. Absolutely. And Bally C makes a very good point. Remember, grow what you can. It's our hobby, not our job. Never lose the joy of growing. I completely agree with that. Yes, it is a very, very good point. We are growing our own as a hobby. It's not our job. I, I do. I, I may be a very passionate grower owner, and I want to grow as much food as I possibly can to feed myself and any other members of our family. But it is a, it's a pleasure. It's fun. We're meant to enjoy it. Not. But he said, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to steal that comment and make that as a bit of a, a motto. Right, guys, I do have a sew along video, as uh, Jenny just mentioned, peas. So quick video coming up, and then I want to find out your tips on growing peas. Okay, so this week the grow along is simply we're going to grow some peas. Good old trusty humble peas. Now, I'm actually doing these directly in the ground today, save a bit of time. And so I'm just not exactly straight, but I'm making a trench in the ground in which we're going to sow these peas. These are Felton First, which is the peas that have an early variety. These are what the peas look like when it comes into focus. Fairly decent size. I'm going to sow these quite thickly straight into the ground. Now I know some people actually soak their peas first. Um, I've tried it in the past and I've not really found it makes much difference. But I'd like to sow, I like to grow quite a few peas. As I said I'm putting quite a few in there because well it's, if they all germinate we can always thin them out. But quite often they may not all germinate mice or something might get them as well. Now we're just going to cover that back in like so remove any weeds and leave those to grow. Once they start germinating I will put some netting in for these to grow up which is quite important when it comes to peas. I will also put a cloche over these just to protect it from the soil from the uh, the cold. One important thing I think it is to remember with peas, pick them as soon as they are ready. That way you actually get more out of your harvests. But this is your chance now to share us your pea growing tips in the comments. Indeed, I need your pea growing tips. That's my first row sown this week. I've done them directly where they are to grow. We've just got to be careful for mice. As Graham says, hope that mouse doesn't get them peas. 
Um, they love raw bean and pea seeds. Well, luckily, Roxy got it, didn't she? She got it. So hopefully it won't be a problem. But you're right. Some of, some of the old gardeners, and Digwell's alluded to this, they used to soak the peas in paraffin to stop the mice. I Or some people put um, chicken wire over the top, again, to stop the mice. For me, I'm just going to keep a close eye on it. We'll sow some backups in the greenhouse as well, just in case, but I think we will be okay. Fingers crossed, but we'll keep a close eye on it and see what happens. Um, now, next week, I'm going to be sowing some cabbages. We've been talking about that, so I think next week I'm going to sow some cabbages for the sow along, if you want to sow along with me as well. We've got... Um, an interesting development with a seed company as well at the moment. I'm negotiating. You'll hear more on the podcast tomorrow where we've got a, a seed of the month. I'll save that for tomorrow. We're going to be sowing that on the camera later on. Now, on that note, just quickly, last week you sent me the mission. It was Beddows who sent me the mission to create a model railway mock-up of an allotment. I... I'm going to put this as failed, but I will show you what I've done next week. Reason being, uh, all the bits haven't turned up to make it. So apologies for that. But next week, I will show you what I've made. So I failed for this week, but I will bring it back in next week. But that does also remind me I need a mission or a challenge to do over this next week. If it's any use on Saturday, I'm going to hide holes. So perhaps. I could do something there. Uh, Ian says, I put a sweet potatoes in a pot with a little water on the bottom, but it's just rotted the top. Plus, I have potted it on in compost to grow some slips way back in January. Still no slips growing. Yeah, Ian, I'm exactly the same. My sweet potatoes hasn't done any slips either. So we'll wait and see what happens with that. Scott says, I'm growing a purple snap pea called purple magnolia snap. They will be nice in the salad as they won't lose a colour because they are not cooked. Yeah, I mean, this is it. We're getting into that time where peas are going to be sown. I'm doing the potted peas, but of course, we've got snap peas and sugar peas and things like that that we're going to be sowing. I will constantly, constantly be sowing peas and beans for these next few weeks. Rob says, my dad always did that with his peas. I think talking about soaking in paraffin. Uh, it doesn't appeal to me, but hey, um, it, it, it does sound crazy. Lost my first sowing of broad beans to mice. My second lot are up in a floating shelf in the polytunnel. This, this is it. There's always chance to sow again. So... We'll see what happens. As I said, if mine get eaten by peas, I've got backups in the greenhouse. Digwell says, I found no difference with soaking slash not soaking peas. I found the same. So some people, <coughs> oh, God, there was a cop and a hiccup at the same time there. I found some people would say that if you lay, your, you put your pumpkin, your, that's easy for me to say. I'll get my words out now. They take their peas and they soak them in water overnight before sowing. And some people say they germinate better. I found absolutely no difference. So I don't bother. I just put them in the ground or into my root trainers and we will see what happens. Um, I think this is Amanda or Rebecca in the Facebook group. Blimey peas and paraffin. Did people actually then eat the peas? Yeah, they did. Like it, you, the paraffin was just to stop the mice from eating the peas. But the shoots grew fine. So you're right. It, it doesn't appeal to me, but that's what people would do. It doesn't sound right. Jenny says, if you lay some cut lavender, rosemary, curry plant over the peas and beans, it can stop the rodents sniffing them out. That's a good tip. That's a very good tip, isn't it? Um, I, I think that's a, yeah. Yeah, some, some of those strong smelling herbs. Or mint would probably work because some mints rodents don't like, isn't it? I think peppermint or something. Uh, Ian says, in Victorian time, they used to pot broom, the wild yellow shrub, chopped up over the peas and covered with soil. Interesting. That's very interesting. Again, anything to deter that, that uh, thing. Uh, Jenny says, it's early for slips yet. They will root long before slips form. They get a lot of roots and then will fill the jar. 
Okay, so just be patient with what you're saying. Nicholas says, I have to do in module trays or I lose them all. Talking about peas. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Scott says, challenge, create a herb. I think that's meant to be a herb garden. Well, that could work. That could work, actually, because I've just, I've got myself, or a friend has donated, shall we say, a big Belfast sink. It came out of a pub. And um, we could we could be using that to create a herb garden. So that could be something, if everyone agrees, that we could do. Uh, Rob says, never done anything, done any good trying to grow sweet potato. I've done well in the past. You've got to remember, lots of water, lots of heat, and try and grow them up, is what I say. Big Rob says, some say the peas germinate in a day, a day quicker, but you have wasted a day soaking them. Exactly, exactly. It's exactly the same sort of time. There's just no difference, is there? Um, sensible mouse, they didn't eat the peas, but the human did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, herb tea mix. Herb tea mix could be a challenge there. Uh, is it going to be too early in the season to do that? Is it going to be too early in the season to do herb teas planted? I'll let you think on that. Graham says, I will try that, Jenny. I've loads of lavender in my front garden and herb tea mix. My garden also works or both. It's up to you guys. What do you want to challenge me to do this week? As I said, I am at Hyde Hall on Saturday, IHS Garden, if that does help. But the herb tea gar or herb garden sounds like a good challenge. Anybody else got any more tips on how to grow peas? I, I think my biggest tip I have when it comes to growing peas is pick them regularly when they are young. Don't let them go to seed, basically. If they go to seed, they stop trying to flower. They stop trying to reproduce. So we want to keep picking them so that we constantly have the supply of, um, of, 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 of what's going on. Uh, Richard says, I still want the bunker. I still want the bunker. What bunker? Um, what What bunker? Have I missed something? I'm just going back. I can't see anything else. Um, I still want the bunker. Let me know. Let me know what that is. Scott says, always set my peas, set my peas in off in guttering. Yeah, that's something else a lot of people do. <laughs> um, they would get a piece of gutter. And they would pop peas in and slide them into that. That was a good idea. That was good. Uh, that's a good a good idea. Digwell says maybe do a feature some sometime of the harvest from those that follow the grow along. Yeah, I I, I get a bit lost in that. I get a bit forgetful what we've done. On it to be honest, I keep meaning to make little labels up and stuff, but that's something we could do. Um, I stopped growing peas as none ever got home. That's the trouble, isn't it? You pick them and they are so tasty. That's why I grow some at home and down on the allotment. Uh, the underground bunker from a few weeks ago was that when I was talking about how I would like an Anderson shelter. We don't actually have an underground bunker, bunker but I've always said that I would like an Anderson shelter. Uh, is that what you're talking about? I'm trying to remember what it was or, or something like that. Yeah, I've always wanted an Anderson shelter in the garden, an underground underground bunker. It's like a, a shed or somewhere to go and and see what's going on. But um, I think that's what you're talking about, isn't it? I don't actually have one. I would love one. Um, I think so. Jenny says, I sow peas in those strip gardens centres sell veg plants in. Easy to move around and plant in, and I plant in several places. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Um, good thinking. Those those strips of vegetable plants that are, I think, quite expensive at the garden centres nowadays. Things really have got expensive. But, uh, yeah, they sell peas in those. And then um, they probably are a nice size just to – Pop in and out. Uh, Graham has Graham, another Graham. This is Graham Bolton. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. Hope everyone is well. Just got back in from the NEC again. Crikey, you are there a lot. 
I'm there in a couple of weeks' time, funny enough, but you are there a lot. Hope you had a good day, though. Uh, Idaho says, I germinate peas on damp kitchen powder. I, I germinate peas on damp kitchen paper towel in Ziploc bags. Then thanks to UK YouTubers, I plant them in gutters. I always have a great crop now. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, the gutters work. The gutters do work. You, you, you can't say anything against it. It's a nice, easy way of planting things out and, and what have you. I'm all about keep it simple at the moment. Um Oh, I'm looking far too relaxed now, aren't I? Uh, Rob says, hey, up, Graham, how you doing? Oh, yeah. And Termistry, my common space are made from an Anderson shelter. I need to get an Anderson shelter. I really do. Well, I that involves digging up my garden, which is going to take quite a while because it's a heavy, 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 heavy clay soil that we have here. But, yeah, the um, there must have been one in the past here i don't know how they dug it because it is so heavy uh right let's have a look at your photos and we've got quite a good collection of photos this week of course it was the first month um first of the month this week so we expect to see some of your first of a month plot shots uh, so the chilies are up first with their first of the month plot shot as you can say they were looking forward to sharing this with us and it looks so good i've got to say it really does look neat and tidy it looks like there's so much going on um it looks amazing it it, it really does look like it spring there doesn't it it just looks great uh scott has been making the most of his new shed with his tea making facilities looks absolutely wonderful once again uh and this is his plot photo as well again lots of progress going on there and things are making lots of lots of moves there um good stuff good stuff uh jenny saying she was sowing seeds she couldn't sleep so she got up and at 3 a.m and sowed some seed peas seeds i put peas on them at night but it should be seeds and peas on my mind busy busy but three o'clock in the morning it's what else are you going to do you know uh, kate was busy at her local gardening club this is quite a structure isn't it a local gardening club they were sowing seeds chatting and drinking tea as you do do at these club events great thing to see hope you had a lot of fun at it as well and uh, benos has got this new gate i love this gate i think this is meant to be a joke by the way but i do love this gate using old garden tools to make the interesting structures and stuff so like it i like it a lot has anyone ever made something like this um let us know now richard uh these his artichokes are looking great they really have started to grow but they're looking absolutely fantastic it has to be said uh artichokes one i struggle with but we're going to try again and see if we can actually get some edible i've actually grown some artichokes from seed at the moment Keep sharing those photos. You can post them in our Facebook group, send to me via social media, or you can email me richard at the uk. That's richard at the uk. Keep those photos coming as well. We do love to see them. Uh, always love lots of photos. Uh, where were we? Digra says, or maybe a review of your so alongs progress as harvesting is a long way off. Yeah, I, I I I keep meaning to refer back to things. I've just got to find a way of trying to keep, you know what I'm like, ADD brain. Everything goes out my brain as soon as we uh, forget it all or as soon as we've done it all. So I've got to try and keep track of what I'm sewing on these sew-alongs to try and bring it back and see how we get on. I can't even remember what we sewed last week, so we'll see what happens. Graham asks, are you going to garden as well, mate? If so, I'll be there yet again. Are you talking about the one at the NEC, Bewley or All the End House? I'm probably going to go to all three now. Um, if you talk about the NEC, I'm probably going to go on press day as well. So good chance to see you there. Um, anybody else going as well? Anybody else going to the garden as well? 
I do have a code if you want some discount codes for Garda as well. I do have a discount code. I also have a pair of tickets that we're going to be giving away. There's going to be a competition coming out tomorrow for the um, Spring Fair uh, for a pair of tickets. Uh, keep an eye on the blog for that. Great plot photos, Chili's. Uh, great photo. Great plot photo, Scott. Uh, Bethan says, love the colour blue on your kettle, Scott. Very jelly. Nicholas says, have you mentioned play the thumbs up? Yes, please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a follow. Please do give us a subscribe. And don't forget to click the notifications so that you know when we go live. Digwell says, love that greenhouse. Absolutely brilliant greenhouse. Uh, Amanda says, I took plot photos and forgot to send them. We'll send them later for next week. Please do. Please do send those photos. We do love to see them. If you send them in the you can email or social media is fine, but if you post them on our Facebook group, uh, I would definitely see them as well. I always go through the Facebook group to see what we've got. Thermos Stream says, I'm so far behind on my plot photos this year. Hardly been on the plot this year to take any. Think I need a canal barge on it. Well, start now. You know, there's still you can still start. There's no difference with, with that. Uh, Graham says, hit the like button, guys, please. Help the channel indeed. Please do hit that like button, please, and all of that. Uh, Idaho says, nice way to use the time. Jenny, better than tossing and turning, talking about not being able to sleep at 3 a.m. Gives me ideas. Absolutely. Very clever gate. I love that gate. Uh, nice photos, everyone. Scott loves that gate. Uh, nice photos, everyone. Idaho, well, Kate, awesome greenhouse. Uh, great photos, everyone. I think that the greenhouse was a club greenhouse, but I could be wrong on that. It gets worse, I'd hope, after I did some on online shopping. Never good, never good. Uh, Graham says, Richard, at the NEC, mate, see you there. I will I'll make a point of seeing you as well. I know what you mean. I have forgotten more than I care to remember. Yeah. You know what I'm like? I'm useless at. ADD. ADD is all I can say. I am useless um, at trying to sort, trying to keep everything worked out. Uh, yes, I'm going to hope to see you again, Richard, but I'm not sure on which day yet, just sorting shifts out. I'm Well, if I go on the press day, I might be there the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So that's what I'm thinking, but I'll see, I want to see what you guys are doing. I'm saying can't do the Sunday because I've got to be back for this show. I decided about NEC Garden as well. No return train tickets for sale yet. Yeah, I'm. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I, I, I was in two minds, but I'm going. I'm going. Uh, the snow was my plot photo. Oh, sorry. Did I? Sorry, did I miss that? I thought that was on your personal page. I don't think I saw it in the group. That in in the Facebook group. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Bethan says, I'm hoping to go all three Garners World live. I, I too have a competition discount codes coming on my YouTube channel soon. It's as if we were both at the same press event. Indeed, it was. Yes, indeed, it was. Um, it just goes to show how uh, how we can do the, go to these events, open things up. Um, Jenny says it was a seed shopping, though. And uh, you in, you'll enjoy yourself. I know I will enjoy myself. I know I will enjoy myself. That's the trouble. Uh, it's just, I love gardening. I, I, I know I love gardening shows. There's a chance I might be going to Chelsea this year, but I love gardening shows because they're just so much fun. Um, and I get to meet so many good people as well, which is the bit I really, really love. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Dig was being rude as always, <laughs> um, but yeah, let's try and all get there on the same. If we are going, let's try and do it as part of a group so we can all try and go on the same day and have a, a meet up. Um, although Ben says, I'm not telling you, Dig well, indeed, indeed. Uh, both chilies are booked in for the Friday at Bewley this year. I could have got you a discount code, but I'm going to be going on. I'm going to be going on the Friday for Beaulieu. I wasn't going to go, but they persuaded me. There's, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Especially as there's more veg related stuff. Um, 
I think this is Rebecca. Richard, you should go to the Chelsea. Sarah Raven is doing a garden. It's a must for me to see that. Yeah. I reason I've never gone or Chelsea didn't want me in there because the BBC has broadcasting rights. So they were like, uh, you can come, but you can't record anything on site, which I was a bit like, there's no point in going in. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, I do every RHS show, flower show around the country. You've got your work cut out for you. I'm definitely thinking there's more that we should be going to. We need to talk about this a bit more and try and work out dates. Now, talking of that, so we've got just under 10 minutes left of tonight's show. Uh, we'll recap on what we were discussing about growing food all year round. Uh, did we think the mission for next week <coughs> is this herbal tea, excuse me, herbal tea garden bed? Has everybody agreed with that? Uh, this, I'm going to sow cabbages next week. The subject for next week is, uh, anybody got any ideas? There was a discussion about if I could do a show about how keeping chickens, but is that something that's going to interest everyone, or do we do we do that next week? I know uh, I know a few of you do have chickens, but I know not everybody does. But I think that's definitely a discussion um, we could have if that is of any interest to you. Um, I didn't put the snow photo on the group page. That's why I didn't see it. That's why I didn't see it then. Sorry. Uh, you can post it now and I'll include it for next week. That's why I didn't see it and feature it. Oh, sorry, sorry, on your personal page. Um, but that, that's why I didn't see it. You didn't send it to me via email, did you? No, I checked that um, before anything. But, yeah, uh, next week, do you want to talk about chickens and chicken keeping? Is that something you would be interested in? And, as always, this is where I want to get your tips and tricks on chicken keeping as well. Is that going to be something for an hour and a half? Uh, or is there any other subjects that you would like to discuss? Um, so let's me cap. Talking about growing food all year round so that you have something to harvest pretty much every day of the year. I think we are all the, the stance or the, 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 or the thing that I've said all along is that it's about thinking ahead. Um, what we, what, why we, what we sow seeds in advance to make sure they can go into the places that they need to go, and keeping things going. But also using things like cloches, veggie pods, greenhouses to grow some more of the salad crops all year round as well, and as well as the autumn winter varieties of seeds that can be sown during the autumn winter period period two um yeah lots of lots of interesting things it's just lots of comments coming in there uh so kate says yes to chicken keeping for me jenny says yes please to chickens also the different ways they can be housed etc deep Bedding, compost in, etc., etc. A lot of things, yeah. A lot of things we could get into on that. Digwell says no interest in chickens, but maybe good to learn. Yep, okay. We we can discuss it if you're up for it. And Graham says herbal tea is good by me, Richard. Make a change for my old grey. Okay, so next mission, and I'm going to use the uh, butler sink for that. Create a herb tea bed okay that's what we're gonna do chicken's good idea would like to more to know how don't have them yet oh cool and time Street, no interest in chickens but happy for you to feature okay we're going to do the chickens next week uh where do i put that next week chickens Ch -ch -ch chickens seems like a good subject well, certainly one i think will interest a lot of us. Something I'm pretty good at as well. I have to take lots and lots of photos and ready for the discussion. Um, chicken chat, good for me. Perhaps, Nicola, you could send in pictures and things of your chicken coops or your ducks as well and add a bit to it 
if that is possible, because I know you've got chickens, ducks, and other things as well. Uh, we used, to, I think I've said, we used to have quail here at the Veg Ground Podcast HQ, but we got rid of quail now. Um, quail were great. They were tiny little birds. They produced some tasty eggs, but we just didn't find that we were eating the eggs fast enough, so we decided to get rid of them. And I, I, I'm glad we have in some ways. I think that is... Um, the, I think that was the good thing. Uh, uh, this is so insensitive, but I keep thinking Digwell will have a wonderful chicken recipe. Sorry. Don't be sorry at all. Don't be sorry at all. It, it, it's true, because I might touch on meat, keeping chickens for meat. I might touch on that subject as well in it. Chicken Chat, my favourite starter at Chicken Chinese Restaurant. Uh, Graham says, I want to keep ducks. I'd love to keep ducks, but just not possible here because they would, well, <laughs> with this winter, they'd probably be absolutely fine in our garden, to be honest, in most people's gardens, but I'm just going to keep ducks because of the noise they produce. Most chicken for me next Sunday. And, oh, the jokes are coming in thick and fast about the chickens. So definitely something we're going to talk about next week. And if you do want to throw in a chicken recipe, um, please do go ahead. If anybody does have any questions for this subject in advance, they want to throw my way, get in touch and I'll I'll try and answer it while trying to work out a format for the show. Um, but yes, we will discuss it next week, get everybody to, to describe, uh, add their own thoughts in and go from there. Chickens for eggs and meat, says Graham. Uh, happy to do photos on bantam chickens and ducks. Yes, please. Please do. Love to see them. And time stream. I love a roast chicken dinner, though. Like roast taties and parsnips. We have got a delicious parsnip hash brown recipe coming for you on the podcast tomorrow it's from Chef Scott. So something looking, look to look forward to for that. Um, right. <laughs> Moving on, Scott says, keeping chicken for meat would be great, something I would like to do, but wouldn't want to do it without knowing exactly what to do. Yeah, I agree with that. Nicholas says, ducks make less noise than chickens. People have said that. I have heard that. <coughs> but then other people say that's not true. Um, but they also make more of a mess, it has to be said. My mate decided to keep ducks. Three weeks later, he had no garden, just a big mud bath. That's exactly what I thought as well. Geese are noisy. Yeah, geese are. Geese are very, very noisy. Turkeys too. Um, again, if I did have the land, if I did, I know I said earlier, it's not about the space, it's about using the space, which I completely agree with. That's the subject right there. Um, I, I would keep a few more things like geese and turkeys and, and what have you in order to basically be a small holder, I guess you could say. But yeah, uh, Nicola uh, Digma says used as guard dogs in whiskey distilleries. Talking about ducks or geese, geese, yeah, guard geese. Um, and Rob says geese are the best guard dogs you can get. Completely right, completely right. Uh, Bethan says my chickens are very quiet. I hear the chickens two doors down more than I hear my girls. I hear my girls for the last couple of days, but that's because they the changed things with the new chickens of course right guys we are coming to the end of this week's episode it's been a good chat once again a lot of things discussed a lot of things that that we are sharing our tips with and it long may it continue next week it's the chicken chat we are going to be creating a herbal tea bed and i know exactly what i'm going to use for that and I'm going to be sowing cabbages. So lots of things that we can uh, discuss going on next week. Get ready for next week. Got any photos, videos, please do send them in and share them with us as well. Always happy to see them and see what we can do with those as well. Next Sunday at six, as always. Looking forward to it already. I'll speak to you again then. Um, yeah. Bye, guys. You take care. All the best. Have a good